component most likely to fail in a computer is the mechanical hard disk drive. Because of its mechanical components that wear out with repeated use, the scenario can and does occur. With a probable hard drive failure sure to happen at some point, you should be sure you're backing up your data daily. The Guardian Maximus, or GMAX for short, provides real-time RAID 1 redundancy for your critical data, such as financial records, medical files, and projects that you simply can't risk losing. It works seamlessly with any Mac or PC and saves your data to two hard drives simultaneously in a RAID 1 configuration. When combined with a backup utility you trust, it adds an extra level of protection from system downtime that would occur with a single hard drive failure. The front panel is equipped with drive status LEDs to show you at a glance which drive is being accessed and if any action is required. So if you do experience a drive failure, it's important to note which drive the indicator lights show has failed. When the mirrored RAID 1 setup is restored, it will rebuild the data to the new drive from the existing drive. Depending on the amount of data being restored, any rebuild can take up to several hours. Since the GMAX was introduced in 2007, there have been several updates to the internal controller. You'll need to be sure which model you specifically have before swapping out a failed hard drive in order to properly rebuild the RAID. The easiest way to find out which model GMAX you have is from the port setup on the back of the unit. This will help identify which particular Oxford chipset your model utilizes as well as which drive bay inside the GMAX you should install a new drive. There are three possible chipsets that exist in the GMAX. Does your GMAX have an eSATA port? If not, yours is one of the earliest models, built from 2007 through April 2009, which offered FireWire 800 and 400, as well as USB 2 ports. This particular model did not offer an eSATA port and contains the Oxford 924 chipset. This will allow you to rebuild the data mirror from either drive location. When a drive fails, the LEDs on the front of the unit will indicate which drive will need to be replaced with a solid red light. In this particular model, drive 1 will be attached to the cable that is closest to the outer edge of the machine. Drive 2 will be attached to the innermost cable. Simply remove the faulty drive and insert a new drive. In this particular model, the new drive can simply be swapped for the failed drive. The RAID will automatically rebuild itself regardless of which channel the drive is attached to. As the data is being transferred to the new drive, the LEDs will indicate which drive is being rebuilt with a solid orange light. At the same time, a blinking green light shows which drive is transferring the data and the rebuild light the solid blue. The LED status will return to normal when the rebuild is finished. If your GMAX does have an eSATA port, you have either the 936 or 946 chipset. To determine which one you have, check the power supply connection. If it's a single pin power connector, your GMAX uses the Oxford 946 chipset and can be rebuilt from either the first or second drive location as well. When a drive fails, a solid red LED will indicate which drive has to be replaced. In this model, Drive 1 is attached to the surface-mounted SATA connector and Drive 2 is attached via cable. Just like the 924 model, remove the failed drive from the GMAX and insert a new drive in the empty drive slot. During the process, the rebuild LED will blink green until complete and the LEDs will return to their normal state. If your GMAX has an eSATA port but has a 4-pin power supply connection, you have an Oxford 936 chipset, which means your RAID mirror must be rebuilt from the Drive 1 location. On these units, the outermost SATA connector on the board will connect to Drive 1, while the innermost connector goes to Drive 2. In most cases, this should also be printed on the circuit board next to the connectors. If Drive 2 has failed, as indicated by a solid red LED, simply remove the bad drive and replace it with a new one, as in the previous scenarios, and your RAID will be rebuilt. However, if Drive 1 has failed, you will need to remove it, take Drive 2 from its slot, then attach it to the Drive 1 connector. 
This will allow your data to be read from the existing copy and rebuild the RAID to the new drive that you have now attached to the Drive 2 position. As the GMAX undergoes the restoration process, the drive being rebuilt will indicate which drive is being written to with a solid orange LED indicator as the rebuild light blinks green until complete. There's no telling what the future holds in terms of technological advances, but with the SATA interface having been in widespread use for many years, and because we don't employ any proprietary data write routines on the drives, you'll be able to retrieve data from the GMAX drives for many years to come.